Fashion is more than a piece of clothing that is seen on the streets or in magazines. Fashion is a huge form of art. It's a form of self-expression. Fashion is its own culture. You get to decide who you want to be and express it with the clothing you wear. And you do it without saying a word. So be fabulous and be yourself because your style is your way of life. This is a headband I made when I was 12. Now this is one of my favorite vintage pieces. So this is my cat shirt. So this is my mom dress. Okay, this is a crop top. Here is my favorite pair of pants. This is my mom outfit. This is my favorite jacket. This here is a blue linen dress. This is a typical outfit I would wear to school. I made this dress. I found this at Cotton On. It's a really good store. So this is my favorite coat from Lula Vintage. This dress is something I recently got in New York. This is the kind of outfit that I would wear in the summer. This here is a dress that my mother gave me. I found this hat at Goodwill. These are colors you might not think normally would look good together, but I think they look really nice on these shirts. And this dress that I'm wearing is one of the dresses that I really, really like because of the color and the design. I really like this one because of the red, bright red color and it has my initial on it. I got a couple of tiger shirts, which I plan to get more because I just kind of, I really like tigers. I think they're kind of awesome. I like this just because you can wear it like any time of year. One of my favorite outfits of all time is my judo game. I haven't been practicing as of lately, but I plan on getting back into it. I've always just enjoyed the color pattern because I love purple. It's one of my favorite dresses because I wore it out to go to one of my high school dances and I also wore it to go to one of my cousin's weddings. I really like it because you can wear it with like almost anything, black pants, you know, white skinny jeans. And I think that it's really nice because you can dress it up or down depending on what accessories go with it. Could be casual, could be dressy, but it's a cute shirt. It goes with a lot of stuff. It has pockets which is always really cool when it just has pockets. It's vintage. I'm pretty sure it's handmade. I really love, I love the cut and um, how fitted it is. I really like it because of the way that it feels when you wear it. This is all monk traditional, but kind of modern as well because some, a lot of monk outfits don't have like it cut here. It's really simple, so it's my go-to dress and it's basically my equivalent of sweatpants. I always pair it with my bag, my favorite bag. And to edge it up a little bit, I can wear my orange Doc Martens with it. What I would put on with this shirt are these really nice pants that are printed and they have a nice pattern with it. Um, I like pairing things together that are have both elegant aspects and edgy aspects. I like to think of it as my Halloween shirt. You know, it has orange and black and some pink in there. This one is from a favorite uh, popular song here, which um, is Thrift Shop. And to accessorize it, I would add in this really cute diamond studded necklace. It's a Forever 21 uh, blazer with a faux leather lapel, and I really like it. It's really cool. These are special to me because these are really like comfortable and they have this really cool floral pattern to them. It needs to be tailored and done up so it's a little more stylish, which I will do in the near future. I like the pattern on it. It's really simple, but it sort of gives it like a sprinkle look to it. It's just kind of a tank top but it's got these um, sewed pleats. I knitted the hat, cowl, and scarf myself with yarn I got as a Christmas present. And I like it because it's really colorful. It's a um, my favorite shirt, actually. I wore it on the first day of Design Diaries.
Brown Diaries is a program that partners American girls in the Twin Cities with uh, Palestinian girls in Jerusalem to study who we are um, and self-expression through clothing and fashion. This is a dress from the 1940s. The girls started out by looking at historical garments and in both cases that meant looking at collections of their respective host museums, which also got them presented during teleconferences with their counterparts. Hi. And I drove it. I wanted to make a jacket out of wool because it's so cold here. I've always been interested in clothing as a form of expression. I started designing clothes at a very young age because I was unable to find anything in the store that suited me. What drives me now is the ability to inspire other people. I'm interested in telling stories through my clothing lines. Um, and the stories that I tell are, are sort of different adventures that I go on in my mind. And, and I invite others to go on those adventures with me. So my work in, in fashion to me is very much um, empowering people to pursue that adventurous lifestyle. So I like to work with, with warm fabrics, with wools, natural fibers, and, and make clothes that people feel like they look good in, but then they, they also can, can wear the clothes on their outdoor adventure. I'm just designing for me and, and designing for people like me and and people interested in the th same things I'm interested in. When I tell people I'm a fashion designer, sometimes I feel like I have to explain that I make these garments that are beautiful, but I'm not particularly interested in, in runway or red carpet or high heels and, and lipstick. I'd say that um, being competitive is not a good trait in fashion design. I think the best work comes from a collaborative effort and it's important in a, the community of fashion to have people supporting you and you know to bring your resources together. It's important to know that what you're doing is important and it's it's special to you and maybe your first clothes that you make aren't perfect. You know mine definitely were there's some that I look back on I'm like oh my god I can't believe I designed that but it's all on this path to get you to where you're going. Like It takes a long time to get good. And so you just have to continually design and make new things and be passionate about it. I wanted to open a vintage store because I just have always been interested in things that are older. I like all time periods. Like There's something about each thing that's interesting to me. So it's more that what fits my body, that's what I like for me and that's what I wear. But, but in general, it's very open. Instantly, as I started, I not only read books and all that, but I met people and they would be like, I got this job in 1949, this is my first paycheck, I bought this garment. And then I was like, you know, I just, in my mind, I was like, this is from 1949, the fall season. And there it was in my brain. And I remember things very well, so I was able to use that. One thing I did was I went to um, the St. Paul campus and looked at all the Vogues, because at the time you could actually touch the Vogues. And I went through every season and I memorized every season of every year what was in style. It helps to also know, not only for my customers, but for my purchasing. Some people come in and they have like a notion of what something is, like maybe the 70s looks like this or the 70s looks like, and then I'll, I'll redirect them like that's not really actually even from the 70s, like I have to like teach people mm -hmm. oftentimes. Sometimes I just let it go because it's not important, it's only important that they're happy, but if I have an opportunity to educate someone, I do because I feel like if you constantly legitimate misinformation, then, then the history, history or the past will be lost. My style is usually very mod 60s, I would say. So I wear a lot of what they called shift dresses, it's kind of this shape. Um, and you know sh shorter things and I just generally like really mod looks um, from that it's late 60s early 70s kind of time period. I originally was wearing secondhand and vintage clothing when I was in high school 
Um, the vintage clothing trend was just starting because it was in a lot of movies back in the 1980s. It's more environmentally friendly to recycle clothing rather than put it into the landfill. And so I thought, well, one thing I can do is I can buy almost everything vintage or secondhand. And so I've been doing that since 2008. And right now, because I just did a clothing count and looked at the vintage and secondhand versus non-vintage. I'm at about 48% of my whole wardrobe is vintage or secondhand. The clothing quality was a lot different and actually a lot, I think, better. Um, when you buy clothes that were made in the you know, 1980s, 1970s, 1960s, 1950s, and so I wound up also getting into sewing so that I could learn how to make things that are also better constructed and that'll last beyond me. When I started sewing, and I learned to sew from my mom, my mom started sewing partly because she was a tall woman and couldn't buy clothing off the rack, and it was, there was a real clear savings in sewing your own clothes. And I think there's value in that too of creating something that you did. I think that's really satisfying. If you could get the same quality of fabric and, and did good quality construction yourself, I still think you have a better, less expensive garment than a comparable item off the rack. But you know, these days we can all go to Target. We can all go all sorts of places and buy things. We sell the same major pattern companies that the chains sell, but then we also sell some small independent companies that you could, you'd never find at the chains. And we also buy from a number, number of fabric vendors who don't sell to the chains either. If you work at Treadle, you have to know how to sew. You have to be a good problem solver about sewing. Um, you, and you've got to be great working with the public. Mary, the owner, when she, when she opened her business, felt that there was a need for a store that specialized in natural fiber fabrics. And so that was the niche that she chose to fill and we've continued to do that. You know, our focus is really to have fabrics and the components you need to sew clothing. And so most of our customers are sewing clothing and most of them are sewing them for themselves. In creating their final designs, the girls had a few different challenges they had to meet. Their garments had to show something they had learned about their cultural past, um, whether it was Palestinian or American. They also had to show something they learned about their partner's culture. Um, and finally, and probably most importantly to the girls, they had to express who they were. My final design is a kimono based off of a lot of Japanese culture, but also it incorporates um, Palestinian, um, I guess, relationships with um, shapes and space. One thing I learned about Palestinian culture is the symbolism in fashion. I think in America, there's a lot of aesthetic um, pieces and it's not, there's not so much thought into why we need to put certain symbolism in our um, garments. The process has been very different from things I've done before. Um, before sewing, I've been more of a visual artist, so paying attention to detail and um, being more exact with my measurements, it's been harder, but very educational. My final design is a dress. Um, it's a short tunic style dress. It's made mostly out of a pink cotton fabric, but along the hem and the sleeves, there's red floral geometric pattern. I incorporated elements of Palestinian culture by adding in long bell-shaped sleeves like I saw on many of the Palestinian work garments that we looked at. And then I incorporated American history into my dress by trying to design it like a 60s dress. I was really inspired by the go-go dresses of that era. My personal style was incorporated because I really like bright floral patterns and I really like shift dresses, so that was what I designed for that. My final design is a dress and it's kind of based on 1930s style. It's got butterfly sleeves and it kind of looks like a mop grap dress so it's the front is asymmetrical like this. My personal style is that I really like the print and the trim is shocking pink which is one of my favorite colors. 
Also, it was introduced by Schiaparelli in the 30s, so I thought that was kind of cool that it had that connection. I incorporated Palestinian design through the border I drew. I knew barely anything about Palestinian culture before, so I learned about kind of their situation in the Middle East. I learned a lot about Palestinian embroidery and Palestinian clothing. And also through interacting with the Palestinian girls, I learned that they might be different from us in some ways and live in a different place, but they're really similar to us too. My final design is a T-length dress with a pleated skirt that has a lace train. It is 1940s inspired. The sleeves are, um, satin and then they have an organza oversleeve that is ruched so that you can see the undersleeve. The dress is going to have roses done in Palestinian fabric and then instead of it being just a whole line of roses, it's going to be roses interspersed with Palestinian embroidery. Probably the hardest part about working on this garment was the chiffon because I'm not used to doing French seams while working with chiffon and it liked to, um, to run a lot and so I had to carefully tweak out the runs. The Minnesota part of the garment is in the color scheme which is green, blue, and pink because whenever I think of Minnesota I think of all the greenery as in the trees and the meadows and everything and then of course the 10,000 lakes would be the blue and then in summer the meadows are covered in wildflowers, so I did pink to do the wildflowers. My design is a shirt and skirt. The shirt is a orange, like a coral orange uh, made of silk, and then the skirt is a blue with stripes of sparkles on it and an orange overlay. And then I have a yoke, which is traditionally on the top, but I put it on the bottom. And that's made of Palestinian fabric with three uh, fabric flowers on the hip. For the historic fashion, I went with the bright, bold colors from the 60s. And for my own inspiration, I wanted something bright and bold that reminded me of trips to the Bahamas with my family. So I went with like coral and ocean colors. I think my favorite part is the material that I used for the skirt. It's this really awesome light blue fading into a dark blue uh, fabric with like stripes of sparkles down it and I'm just really excited to wear it. My final design is a dress and the skirt is a high-low skirt. It's much shorter in the front and it gradually gets longer in the back. There's a sheer top that um, is, goes, goes over the whole dress with a Peter Pan collar. A really big part of designing this garment for me was um, taking influences from my own culture. Um, I went to Philadelphia recently and my grandmother had just died and it was really important to me to like, honor her memory by incorporating a lot of her history and her um, life into my garment and I think I did, did a really good job of that. So. My final design is um, a long sleeve tunic, basically, and it's um, orange and yellow and white, and it's really bright and vibrant. Uh, also, I was really interested in the talismans and amulets that the Palestinian culture uses for um, to ward off evil, and so I thought it might be cool to incorporate some of those um, into my design. The hardest part about making the garment was probably finding inspiration and trying to draw inspiration from lots of different things like myself and my culture, but also Palestinian culture and also our history, U.S. history with clothing and also Minnesota culture. Um, I think my design's really different and so I like that. It's kind of like out of the box and not really like uh, conventional. My final design is three garments. I've got a velvet bustier, um, high-waisted skinny jeans with embroidery at the bottom, and a, a sheer baby doll dress or tunic. The fabric of the dress is this really great sheer silk, but then there are um, appliqued velvet flowers on it, and I really love it. For American history, I was inspired by the 90s, um, so I went more into the grungy look with uh, the bustier is black and the jeans are black and then a dark purple dress. I didn't know much about Palestinian culture before so now I know a lot 
more. I know that there's a really deep history in embroidery and in textiles there, and that they can say things about themselves through clothing, which I think is really important for everyone is to express themselves through clothing. So I think that's really cool. My final design is a dress um, inspired by Palestinian culture and also Mexican culture. Learning like from teleconferencing with the girls over there, I learned a lot about embroidery, color meaning, and also like uh, like religious factors that also play a role in that. And by American culture, I researched the 1960s, which was like the mods, like time or era. I learned a lot about color meaning, how different colors represented different things. The hardest part of making my garment would be um, trying, trying to fit the pattern that I wanted to use into like my size because it was bigger. Um, and also figuring out how I was going to use the Palestinian fabric into my dress and personal style. So the main color of my dress is a rose pink and it's a mini dress and it has princess seams on it. For American history, I made the dress the color of a dress that I saw from the 60s collection. What I learned from Palestinian culture was like how much embroidery they put into their outfits and I was able to see a lot of different motifs and the colors of their garments that they use, which is mainly black and red. I incorporated embroidery for, for it to relate to Palestinian culture and there's leaves along the diagonals of my dress. My favorite part of this garment is the embroidery. It took a very long time, but I think it just turned out very well. My final design is a dress. I made a dress because I wanted something that would capture my personality. I also added Palestinian embroidery, which is really fun to work with because um, I got to learn more about Palestinian embroidery throughout the whole experience. I got to learn um, what different symbols mean on the clothing, and I also got to learn more about their traditional wear and what they wear on special occasions as well. Embroidery took me over like three weeks to do, but it was really worth it. The last part of my dress is actually the skirt part, which um, I really enjoyed doing. It was frustrating at times, but um, I really liked how it turned out. My final design is a pair of pants and a tank top. I used the Palestinian fabric at the top and the bottom, as well as block printing on my final garment with white paint. The cut of the garment was inspired by 90s attire, while the colors and the, the fabric were more Palestinian. I didn't know much about Palestinian culture before starting this program, so everything I know now, I've learned from this program. Um, but the thing that uh, struck me the most that I've learned is the way that their fashion um, really ties into their culture historically. and the rich history that it has. The hardest part about making the garment was the learning curve because I didn't know much about altering patterns, changing them, or even about technically how to sew. So the hardest part was to, was to accept everything that I was being taught and believe that it would come out right in the end, which it did. My final design is a lavender dress from the 1950s. To include the Palestinian culture, I am making a belt out of the Palestinian fabric that Aliyah brought back, so it's gonna be like in the middle, and it is made out of the gold striped fabric. And something I learned was that with the Palestinian garments, um, they have like a red, stripe on along the bottom of their skirt to um, signify that they are single or like looking for somebody. I think I'll wear my final garment um, to like nicer like evening events. I think it might be a little bit too fancy for school. Um, so probably like maybe like a concert or something. My final design is um, um, high-waisted pants that are wide-legged and 
Basically, I designed them after um, 1960s Hollywood pants. What I learned about the Palestinian people, I learned about um, like their clothing, which was really interesting, and embroidery. Um, also talking to the girls um, back in Jerusalem. It was quite interesting to learn that they um, watch a lot of the same TV shows as I do, like Teen Wolf and um, Pretty Little Liars. The design of the pants are also like bohemian um, palazzo pants, which um, I'm really into bohemian fashion. Also, it's um, a multicultural piece. It's like I incorporated elements of my culture, which is Cambodian and American and Palestinian. I really wanted to show um, a multicultural diversity aspect into this um, garment because I'm a multicultural person. I used a pleasant peasant blouse, and the peasant blouse is from 1962, and the bi-level hem skirt is like kind of more modern, so in late 1900s. I used the bird for the embroidery, and the bird represents for like the Palestinian culture, like they have overcome like trying to gain like independence, also from the African American culture, like it represents like freedom. So I thought like the bird would be a great way to represent my culture and also the Palestinian culture. The design part was difficult because I haven't had experience before drawing and designing, so I was a beginner at it. But once I kind of had an idea what I wanted to do, I just kind of went with it. And then sewing was also something new for me as well. So. After I kind of got used to it and kept on practicing, then it became easier and easier. It was just more of a mental thing, just trying to endure it. And even though when things got challenging, just keep going. My final design is a gray wool coat with Palestinian embroidery on the collar. And the collar is um, pretty big and it's draped. So it's a little bit structured, but not super structured. Um, the hardest part was probably making the pattern. I bought a pattern of a coat that I kind of liked, but then I had to adjust it, so I did a lot of draping, and it was really challenging to get the look and fit that I wanted. The shape of the coat was inspired by 60s car coats, and um, I'm doing Palestinian embroidery on the collar, and then um, for American history, the 60s car coats, but also I'm incorporating some embroidery from my family into the Palestinian embroidery. Um, and it's pretty minimalistic and that's my style. My final design is a circle skirt and it's a flowy type of skater skirt. The skirts that you usually see nowadays that are getting really popular. I really like the concept of high-waisted um, anything like high-waisted pants, high-waisted skirts, and skater skirts are usually um, worn high-waisted. And that's what was really popular in the 1990s. You start off one way and then everything changes. I started off with a high-waisted pants and I realized that's hard. So I switched it up to a high-waisted skirt. The hardest part would be having it how I wanted it. I really wanted it to be sort of flowy on the bottom with like a lot of um, ripples going through it. Um, but how it was made before, you had to make it more of a circle on the bottom and less of a circle on top. And I didn't know that at first, so then I redid it. Um, so that was a hard, because you have a vision and you're trying to have that vision be shown in your piece. And it's really hard when the fabric isn't working with you, it's working against you. So got to work with it. I think the highlight for some of the girls was being able to actually travel overseas. Hi, my name is Dua Dabash. Hi, my name is Siham Asmar. Hi, my name is Hanin. I'm 15 years old. Hi, my name is Diala Sanduka. When I first was looking for the design that I was going to pick for my dress, I was looking for something elegant and at the same time smart. I have chosen to wear a green jacket and dark blue skirt. I wanted to, to put some Palestinian embroidery in the neck area here and I chose to, to make it with fiery colors like orange, brown and yellow so as uh, to show how brave I am. I have chosen from the magazine and uh, 
I like the style. Doing the shirts and doing the dresses and ev getting everything put together, I didn't think it would be really that hard for everybody, like for a person to do that. So I actually went through it and I saw how hard it is. I have a lot of appreciation for people who actually design clothes now. I learn how I can design any style I want. Most importantly, I, I learned that we have to keep our culture alive so as to have an identity and like to be proud with, with our culture, our history and everything that our ancestors have made. I think that the Palestinian dress and Palestinian patterns uh, are uh, suitable for all tastes so we can include it with the modern styles. Well, my favorite part would be meeting new people, knowing their culture and actually talking to them, get to know them. I like the people here. It's uh, very simple. Um, I guess the whole experience of just getting out of my own comfort zone and uh, my own country, my people, and just meeting new people. I like the nature and the culture and, the, and also the people here. We're here in the U.S. and I come from Middle East. It's totally a different world. So when we first met them and actually talked to the girls, I was like, okay, they're normal girls just like us, so <laughs> it's working. Hi, my name is Mason Santos. Hi, my name is Molly. Uh, hi, I'm Rihanna McGee. I ended up visiting Jerusalem and over there I learned a lot about the culture and the people. Um, I was very surprised to see how similar it is to over here um, and how much I can relate to the girls. Well, I'm really surprised that they know so much about American culture and the things that American teenagers do. One thing that surprised me when I first met the Palestinian girls is how outgoing all of them were. It's been totally normal. It's been like hanging out with another American teenager. I kind of expected them to be uh, like shy, like the kids at my school, but a lot of them were like, hi, how, what's your name? And it was kind of fun. and interesting to meet them and have them so like excited to be in this program. The fashion shows were terrific. We had two fashion shows, one in Jerusalem, one in the United States, and they featured a lot of cultural elements. And then each of the girls walked across the stage wearing the garment she wore as her artist statement was being read. So it was a real moment of pride and kind of uh, completion for each participant.